Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Malcolm Arnold, and I want to talk to you about how we can make Ruby on Rails as historically significant as ancient Greek, Sanskrit, or Latin. Next three to eight years, there'll be a once in a planet time occurrence, once in a planet time opportunity that will never happen again. There's forces that are converging right now that are unprecedented. 50% of the world's population is under the age of 30. In Uganda and Kenya, it's 50% of the population is under the age of 18. Shifting gender percentages globally in China, India, Pakistan, you'll find ultrasound clinics around where people are choosing their birth, of their, uh, the gender of their child, and, making, uh, and choosing males, predominantly over females. There's a theory of war that when the population is larger at the bottom as far as youth, and you have a bulging uh, population of youth. And then also another theory that if you go ahead and have more males than women, and there's not enough mates there, that um, young men will go to war. What we see is we see a greatest disparity in wealth that's ever been there in the, in the planet. And what's interesting is I was planning on doing this, this talk and certain things have happened in the last week. The riots in London, also in Israel. Egypt is, is changing now, not since just the revolution, but also it's changing uh, currently as far as what they are protesting about. And these are some of the isu issues that they're protesting about. There's other forces that are coming into play. Mobile banking, mobile money. Internet connectivity globally. You have Africa coming online in the next uh, three to eight years. Another force that's there is Ruby on Rails is 75% more cost effective than other programming languages. I was talking to Stefan uh, Pesci of uh, Constant Contact when we were applying for a grant, and he, and he said it was 75% more efficient as far as cost efficient. You have this educational bubble that is about ready to happen. What do the, all these forces have in common? How can these forces be leveraged for social good? All of these are happening and converging at this moment in time for the next three to eight years. As I said, in the next three to eight years, there's going to be a once in a planet time opportunity. It will never, ever happen again in this planet's time, ever. Once it happens, it will never occur again. There have been past planet one-timers. Getty recognized this with oil, the worldwide adoption of oil. Edison with the light bulb and the telephone. Gates with the computer. The people who recognize these planet one-timers made incredible wealth. What will happen next? What is this next planet uh, time opportunity? All these other ones will seem very small. Oil is still not being used down to the villager level. People don't have roads. Same thing with electricity. It's not being down, used down to the villager level. Computers are not. The next occurrence is a worldwide adoption of complex computing backed by the cloud, accessible via low-cost mobile devices with internet connectivity everywhere down to the villager level. The dot-com dot boom will seem like a pst. The previous pst was based off of $3,000 computers, 14456K modems and landline internet connectivity to only a fraction of the planet. There was no previous dot-com boom. The money that was being invested in the dot-com boom came in very late. The real boom will be based upon $300 mobile devices, investing knowledge of the previous boom, and distributed success. Small players can play in this game now, whereas before people couldn't afford the $3,000 computers and they didn't have that education. The, outcome, the outcomes of this plant time opportunity, planet time opportunity, I apologize because uh, uh, last night uh, I was preparing for this and uh, my computer crashed. 
uh, so I had to redo this. Uh, it could be either great wealth for the very few, positive social change, or distributed wealth. Ruby on Rails is far more productive than other languages. Do we have more community than other languages? Uh, if we pardon a second, I actually opened up the, the wrong presentation. So uh, I apologize, as I said, it, it uh, crashed. Um, So I'll go back with the one that I had before. These languages are all dead. They all died. We care about the ones in bold because of the community, the culture that they created, the ideas that they created. Those have transcended time. The things that they created mostly have turned to dust. We don't care about them. The, the pyramids and the... Uh, and maybe one other great wonder is still there. The rest of them are all gone. What we care about are the ideas, the culture, and the community, the values. All these languages are dying or dead. Ruby on Rails will be the next one. Our applications will not stand the test of time. They're going to die. They're going to fall. My presentation yesterday is an example of that, <laughs> that I prepared. What lasting values, ideas, and culture has any particular computer science uh, language created? Can you tell me any of those who've been in the community for a long period of time? What culture do we want to create? James uh, today earlier spoke about what culture that we want to create. I want to ask you, raise your hands if you think that the Ruby on Rails community has more community than other programming languages. Raise your hand. The, so about 40%, 50% agree to that. We're at a critical stage of growth right now in the Ruby on Rails community. We're exploding. But what I'd like for you to do is I invite you to look around. Look around. Look at your fellow attendees. Look around. What do we see? Who do we see? This is predominantly, let me ask you a question. Are there any female developers here? Please raise your hands. One, two, three. Three female developers out of, the, out of the audience. Look around as far as people of color. How many people of color are here? What kind of culture and what kind of community do we want to create? Are we going to be able to create a lasting community and culture if we're predominantly white you know, uh, males? How are we going to use these forces to leverage for social good if we want to, or to create a community that we want. Anran Institute debated demos.org. The president of the Anran Institute said that it was an abhorrent concept that there was a social contract with his fellow man, that he should have to take care of his fellow man. These are the Milton Friedmans of the world. What kind of culture do we want to create? Is that the culture that we are as a Ruby on Rails community? I'll tell you a bit about my background. I was a Russian interrogator, then I was a counterintelligence agent, then I was a military intelligence officer. I learned how to wage war and strategically plan maximum destruction upon the enemy to inhibit or destroy his ability to maneuver, communicate, or operate. Personally, I wondered why we went to go war. What were the reasons that we went to war? Because I never really wanted to go to war. Would it, why was macro conflict related to macro, was micro conflict related to macro conflict? What if Hitler had a few more hugs? Or Stalin had a few more hugs? Would he have ever become a Hitler or Stalin? 
That seems kind of Pollyannish, but what if the community was more connected, more sustainable, more equitable? Would a Hitler or a Stalin ever have gotten any traction? So about three, four years ago, I started thinking about a unification theory of humankind and just was wondering if anybody had ever, you know, thought about that. So I started Googling it. I didn't come up with anything. And I just kind of like started pondering what it would look like. I thought, well, it'd have to unite all the religions that are currently there. It'd have to unite agnostics, atheists, and the Ahn Rons and the Milton Friedmans of the world, and the Alan Greenspans of the world. Currently, right now, we're playing an infinite game on a finite planet. We're doing this rush to the top of the mountain, and we've expanded to all portions of the globe. Now everybody is getting closer to the top of that mountain. That's the way that we're playing capitalism right now. And the only way to succeed is to push someone down or push someone off the cliff. Our planet, 100 years from now, 1,000 years from now, is not really going to care about what our intentions are. As the saying says, the road paved to hell is paved with good intentions. Our planet is really just going to care about the results. So I ask you, did you know that 43% of those entering university do not graduate? That the average graduate, if he or she does graduate, graduates with $27,000 of student loan debt and $4,000 of credit card debt. In emerging markets, youth are financing their education with microfinance, with average rates of 20, 28 to 35% interest. Some are committing suicide due to their student loan debt in emerging markets, but also here. In Maryland, we just had a mom who killed her son and herself because of the educational costs and the debt and how it was uh, affecting her. Do you know anyone who's been uh, um, uh, burdened by these uh, stresses? Do you feel it, you know, have, has anybody here experienced student loan debt? Raise your hand. Pretty much of you. How many are still paying off your student loans? Right? Imagine an educational system where the entry fees are only effort and collaboration. If you drop out, you don't owe anything. The school's health and wealth is tied to your lifelong health and wealth and the local community that it serves, and it provides a debt-free education. It produces better global citizens. The wealth generated becomes a community development fund incentivizing social good globally. That fund becomes a community safety net, a financial safety net for those who contribute back to the community. And it creates a more equitable form of capitalism. You don't have to imagine it. It's here, it's now, and we're doing it. Ruby Newby. We start off with Ruby on Rails. Eventually, we'll teach other technologies and then all forms of education. We partner low-income youth with private school students who pay for our courses. They study through ninth grade, Ruby on Rails. By the time that they graduate high school, excuse me, by the time they graduate ninth grade, they go to Ruby Newby Camp. But we also partner up their schools, so they have to go back into uh, each other's communities and learn about each other's communities. So you have the low-income youth, youth going to the private school students' communities and learning from each other. At the end of ninth grade, they attend a five-day camp, Ruby Newby Camp, alongside the professionals who pay for our courses who sponsor them and mentor them. They learn together side by side, building social economic bridges. We house the students in the universities that we partner with. The youth go, wow, I could actually attend this university. At night, they take classes on how to be better global citizens. At the end of the camp, we have startup competitions. Would-be entrepreneurs come in and pitch their ideas for locally grown businesses. A few of the slots and spots for the startup competition are reserved for musicians, artists, and chefs who've won a previously held Best Ideas competition. This way we economically develop the arts. So we have the world's best developers, such as yourselves, coming to teach on volunteerism, such as the camps that were opening up in Uganda and Kenya. Come and teach, volunteer, and then go on tourism. Teaching professionals who sponsor low-income youth, study alongside each other, building social economic bridges would-be entrepreneurs pitching their ideas for locally grown businesses, localism. Musicians, artists, and chefs lending their creative minds. Now the whole community succeeds collaboratively and cooperatively. 
The youth who are not part of the funded companies that we start in the startup competitions, we place in paid internships to work at companies such as yours. They work full-time during the summer, part-time during the school year, doing apprenticeship-based learning, getting to know your culture and your systems. It's a much more efficient model for you to find new developers. By the time they graduate high school, they become intermediate developers. And what we ask is that your companies kick it up a little bit and provide full scholarships to the universities that we partner with so the youth can work for you during the day and go to university at night, getting what we call a try it before you tie that education. We ask for the youth, they drop out, they don't owe us anything. They try it, they don't like it, they drop out. But if we do our job of providing them a skill set where they get hired and a network of professionals such as yourselves who care about their continued success, then we ask for them to voluntarily tithe back 5% of their income for life. I'll go into that more later. It's voluntary, but it's for life. Ruby Newbie is about career creation. We're already doing that. We also teach entrepreneurial skills, and we also teach how to become social entrepreneurs to make the planet a better place. We strive to have 50% of our training time and computer time go to women. We hope to have Jews studying alongside Muslims, studying alongside agnostics, studying along, alongside atheists. Pair programming, pair learning, and incubating businesses together. If we incubate a business together and you're from a different tribe than I am, and my tribe wants to attack you, I'm going to protect you and defend you from my tribe because if they attack you, it's bad for my business. But also by pair programming, we get to learn each other's stories. We hope that this will build diversity, awareness, and more tolerance in the communities. Agile activism is a nonprofit arm of Ruby Newbie. Newbies will identify local and global problems that they want to solve, partner with senior developers such as yourselves, do inquiry based, project based learning, develop solutions for global or local problems in open source code and then contribute that back to the communities. This is based off the apprenticeship model. They're creating their masterpiece and they're giving it back to the guild, back to the community. We look at partnering with NGOs and other nonprofits, so we look at helping other nonprofits, so the newbies will have to also intern at nonprofits and contribute code to them. We look at having rapid deployment teams, being able to go anywhere in the world as far as when there's crisis situations to be able to scale up the communication and the relief efforts with the technology that they need to be able to do that to make it much more efficient. Ruby Newbie and Agile Activism, a community of contributors embracing equal access, equitability, diversity, social justice, sustainability, and friction reduction. These are unifying values. So I talked about my military experience. The antithesis of these values is why we go to war. When we don't have equal access, we don't have equal access to education, marketplaces, politics, internet, net neutrality, equal access to success, equitability. When a CEO makes 2,000 times more than the average employee, doesn't feel that the system is fair. We see the violence that's going on in London and Israel right now due to this not, not having equitability in the marketplace. Diversity. Diversity in thought, but also diversity in action. <coughs> as long as your actions don't infringe upon the rights of others or endanger them, that should be your right. Social justice, pretty self-explanatory. Sustainability, if we don't have enough uh, resources, we fight over them. Friction reduction. Friction is in economic terms, taxes, bribes, paperwork. But also friction as far as personal conflict friction between each of us. So one of the things that we look at teaching is uh, conflict resolution. So at Ruby Newbie, what we look at doing is 25 to 35 percent of our training time, for those who come through in a sponsored capacity, they take classes on these values because we want them to be more sustainable, and more healthy, and more connected as a community. Their success, lifelong, is tied to our success. We look at educating better global citizens, and we look at creating a new form of capitalism, community-based capitalism. The youth who go through our program, they don't pay for it. They drop out, they don't owe us anything. But if we do our job, 
of getting them a career, then they voluntarily tithe back 5% of their income for life. That eventually becomes a huge amount of money. Think about it. If everybody were to contribute back 5% of their earnings for life to an organization, an educational organization, that would become a huge amount of money. What happens to that money? Think about it. Well, Malcolm becomes really, really rich, and he becomes a man. Now, what happens is that we reinvest that money back into the local community. Nobody gets any equity with Ruby Newby. What we try to do is we try to make social good in your self-interest. People will only do social good for a certain period of time. That period of time for each one of us is different. But if we can make it profitable for people to give back to the community, save them money, make them money, attract them more customers, then they'll do it. People like Ron Ron, Milton Friedman, and Alan Greenspan will actually line up to help the community. Volunteerism, I talked a little bit about that. The money that we generate, replenitive capitalism, we keep reinvesting back into the local community. Nobody gets any equity in Ruby Newbie. We'll pay the best salaries, but we will always reinvest back into the community. Financial safety net. For those who contribute to the community, you volunteer for an organization for 10 years. All of a sudden, you get in a car accident. Does that organization say, wow, you're such a nice person. You've been volunteering for 10 years. Can we pay your medical bills? Can we pay your rent? They generally don't do that. I haven't heard of one. But with Ruby Newbie, you'll make a grant application to your local community chapter and they'll either fully fund or partially fund that grant application. Disaster fund, what we look at is I'm from New Orleans. Katrina happened, tsunami happened. What we look at doing is when those things happen, we look at taking our funds and going back to the local communities there, the local Ruby Newbie community, those who have been, been contributing, and we look at getting them back up on their feet. So it becomes a community safety net. Ruby Newby and Agile Activism are part of a much bigger vision called Waging Peace, Not War. It's a strategic and systematic plan to change the planet completely in 15 years and shifting it towards social good and addressing all of the reasons that we go to micro-conflict and macro-conflict. We won't solve them, but what we can do is we can address them. And over a period of time, over a thousand generations, we can do that because we're not taking any equity out of the system we can do that for a thousand generations. The system is 100% efficient. Right now we're in this nice air conditioned room in Austin. Right? It's nice and cool. Outside, it, uh, it's very hot. What an air conditioner does is it takes the heat in this room and pushes it outside. So the form of capitalism that we're creating, community-based capitalism, it's more efficient, it's more sustainable, and it's more fun, but it's also voluntary. Historically significant ideas. Try it before you tie that education. Lifelong education. We provide uh, what we plan on doing as we grow, providing continuing education on all subjects for our community. And then we legacy in the children of those contributing. So eventually what we do is we provide a debt-free education to their children. And as we grow, we provide a debt-free education globally, down to the villager level. And we take banks and education and debt, excuse me, banks and uh, loans out of the educational system forever. We look at having just-in-time education. The youth who go through our program, they go ahead and the companies provide full scholarships so that then they study what they need, when they need it, and when they apply it uh, on the job. Currently, the educational system is such that you go to university for four years, you look for a job for six to eight months. Then it takes you six to eight months to get acclimated to the, to the uh, company. And then if you're really good, maybe two to three years before you're in management. Now, everything that's been studied, if you're actually in the field that you originally started out in, is your education is four to eight years old. I ask you, would you buy a can of soup that was four to eight years old? Would you? I wouldn't. I, there's no way I'd do that. We're not doing education, uh, the way that we're doing education now, it just doesn't work. So this is a big grand vision, but how do we bring it back to the local community? What we look at doing is forming, uh, starting community success and sustainability centers that are 24 hours a day, seven days a week, manned, by the uh, manned and uh, staffed by the community. A collaborative, cooperative learning style. On the weekends, they become performance spaces. 
We're also looking at having at each one of the uh, locations a kitchen where we teach the youth about culinary schools and local food. Instead of eating you know, fast food and having poor dietary ha habits, we care about their lifelong success and health, and we want to teach them those skills. Since we're here in Austin, imagine the centers as like little south by southwest. We're at the centers. We also have a camera embedded where uh, people can, uh, the youth can go ahead and use uh, video cameras, create their own documentaries, do their own local journalism, and then we partner them up with the technology students so that they can go ahead and produce that content and put it out on the web. We plan on growing faster than any other organization in history by learning from the Olympics. Cities compete to host the Olympics. And what they do is they, they make a community action plan to host the Olympics. Each community can start fundraising as soon as we get our platform up to have Ruby Newbie there partnering with universities on a local level, and we'll show you how to do that. Then what we do is we take that, that initiative that you've done and we leverage that with foundations. And then we go, okay, John's community has raised this much money and has all these uh, volunteers ready to go. They've partnered with the universities. They've partnered with the corporations. Now will you fund operations for three years? This way we can go ahead and leverage the local community with the big international organizations. We also look at partnering with the NGOs to help fund these communities on the local level down in, uh, in Africa, like in Uganda and Kenya. So what's my pledge is that to people I tell them in our community is that we're community driven, that we'll maximize the social return on investment for each input, whether that's a volunteer hour or dollar contributed. But we reserve the right to pivot because we're trying to maximize that social return. Where is Ruby Newbie now? We have a team of uh, contributors right now. Uh, Rashawn Snug Stovall is our lead instructor at uh, New York University. We're teaching our classes at New York University. Dan Patton here in Austin is formerly a chief, distinguished chief engineer with Motorola. He's uh, leading up architecting uh, the technologies that we're going to be releasing in the future. Currently, we're teaching a first wave of mentors. We've grown to over 800 members. Our two-minute video was number one in the world for a grant contest from British Airways with 31,000 votes. So I spent a month in Uganda and Kenya to see about how to bring our learning uh, platform down to the villager level. All this success, we've created careers. Uh, Rashawn Stovall has now been hired by NYU to teach a first Ruby on Rails course for undergraduate. People are launching their startups. We had our first class a year ago. All this has been funded on my credit card. And the only expenses have been me going to different conferences such as this to speak and my travel expenses. Everything else has been driven by the community through community uh, contributions as far as just time and effort. And that next year, what we hope to do is we hope to launch a social learning network accessible down to the village level. We hope to have community success centers in New York and, and Africa. Our two minute video because we won that grant, that attracted an additional anonymous sponsorship of 1,000 kilograms of shipping to Uganda and Kenya. We can actually use that anywhere in Africa. So we look at opening up centers in Africa by December. And we hope to open up uh, chapters in multiple cities. In the next five years, if we get the funding, we look at having 120 uh, community success and sustainability centers globally. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to open up a military style intensive training location where we'll actually train the trainers. And when we go to like places like Uganda and Kenya, we want to teach the women first to be the instructors. So we're totally flipping over the dynamic of a male-dominated technology sector. We think that that will increase equitability and also have a uh, calming effect or incentivize peace globally. And we hope to create community-based capitalism, volunteerism. So if anybody here wants to go volunteer in Uganda and Kenya, depending upon how long you want to go for, we look at underwriting your trip and partnering with uh, foundations to actually pay for your vacation. How can I help? Spread the word. Ask companies to sponsor us. Um, ThoughtWorks has come on as a supporter. They're hoping to uh, have trainers go to Uganda and Kenya. Your company could help out with that. Uh, join our meetup group. You could uh, Google us. Um, start a local chapter. Ask about helping to do that. 
and help us design our curriculum. We want to have our curriculum be as agile as possible and be able to scale down to the village level. If you have expertise in any of these things, please let us know because we need this. Learning management systems such as Instructure, which is built on Ruby on Rails, that's what we're, what we're planning to use right now. Student-driven learning platforms such as OER Glue, we want to integrate that with that. Khan Academy, it's built on Python, but we think it's a great platform. It's open source. Uh, security, we want to have about 15% of our training time in technology go on security. So if you're a security expert, we'd really like to have uh, help with that. Also, we want to design a platform that's very, very secure for agile activism. Low power computing, we're trying to design our, our platforms and our technologies to go down to the villager level. Uh, predictive uh, learning analytics, because we want to make the learning process as streamlined as possible so we can get people in, uh, into their careers as fast as possible. Um, question I want to ask you is if you don't agree with the values of Ruby Nuby and what we're doing, I implore you to take this opportunity, the forces that are in the marketplace right now, and use them for social good. Look around. You're Ruby on Rails developers, you're very much in demand. If we, were to act, uh, if we were to collaborate and cooperate and try and use that to leverage for social good, if you don't agree with the values of our organization, I encourage you to start your, start your own and, and start that process. So I want to thank you all very much. Um, and uh, thank you for letting me present. Uh, are there any questions? Simplest way is just simply you know, spreading the word and, uh, and doing that. One of the things that we also want to do is we want, uh, we're going to start uh, online training. And we're looking at l using uh, different, you know, Skype and things of that nature. You actually just you know, start uh, looking at, you know, talk to me, and we can look at starting a chapter in the local community. Uh, what, what is entailed in starting a chapter? Right, we're using uh, meetup.com and we have to figure out legally how, since we're dealing with youth, you know, the liability issues. So we have to figure out if, a, like if it's an affiliate before there's actually a, steal, a stamp of approval or something like that. So we kind of have to figure that out. But what can happen is amongst the adults right now, is a, a, what we're doing at New York University right now is we're not teaching youth yet. What we're doing is we're teaching the first wave of mentors. So people could go ahead and start like their movement in their area. And then um, what we look at doing is then once we're able to get the funding and we get our model really solidified in New York, then we can branch out uh, to other places. What are, what are you focusing on teaching right now? So what, uh, the way that we do our teaching, it's a very collaborative, cooperative learning style. And so what we do is uh, currently we do pair programming. So the first hour of instruction, you learn how to build a technology business, and you volunteer to secure your spot in, this, in, in, the, uh, in the class, because all we're doing is word of mouth uh, advertising. So you volunteer for an hour to build up Ruby Nuby. The next hour is an hour of instruction, and then the next hour is pair programming, and that's based off of where people are and what they want to talk about. So they, they pick a, let's say right now we're using Michael Hartle's book, Rails Tutorial, as a backbone of our, of our program. So people will write a chapter on their name tag, and they choose to uh, coalesce around that chapter, and then they pair program on that way. And we think that pair programming, pair learning will scale. It also incentivizes awareness of, of you know, you have a Muslim studying alongside a Christian, so you have to actually get to know each other and know each other's values and get to know each other. And it's much harder that once you become friends with somebody, to go to conflict with them. So, I mean, you talk a lot about working with universities, but I mean, with the you know, curriculum approval process, usually by the time the curriculum gets approved, it's already outdated, especially with web technologies. So how are you kind of going to go around that? Because, I mean, you talk about like sending them off to a four-year university kind of as part of this program, but if they already know more like this program, then they can get from the university kind of, where does that really fit in? Right, the, the question was is that uh, those who, partnering with the universities, we're not sending them to a four-year university to study the technologies. What we're doing is we are bypassing the university system 
but running alongside it. And those universities that want to partner with us. So they study the technologies that they need, they go to work for companies such as yours, and then they go to uh, school at night studying what they want to, when they want to, and how it can be applied to, to their job. So that way they're getting what we call just-in-time education. Because I agree that the current educational system is slowing down students' path to success. And basically, it's, they're the gatekeeper to their success. And what we are doing is student-driven learning, where the students drive their learning process because they're the ones who are going to be either successful or not. And we think that they will go ahead and make the right choices as long as they're mentored uh, and they have that guidance there. So it's basically succeed at your own pace. So uh, the question is, is that, you know, one, as far as, you know, the, the demographics currently at Ruby Newbie, currently we have more women and more minorities in our uh, group than any other uh, community, uh, any other technology community that I've seen except for, let's say, a, a women-specific uh, tech group or, uh, you know, person of color tech group or whatever that diversity may be. Um, I agree with you completely that uh, you have to look at uh, local cultural values, which are going to be different from each uh, um, community that you go to. So we are community driven. So what we look at is we don't look at going over there and saying we've got a solution. What we look at doing is presenting, hey, we're here to work collaboratively together with the communities that want to work with us. Some communities may not buy into the values of, of our organization. For example, you know, diversity. So that includes LGBTI issues. In Uganda, you have uh, in the parliament that it's being passed to be a death penalty as far as for those who do uh, homosexuality. So there may be communities that we don't go into because of that, but what we look at doing is that it comes from the community and the solutions come from the community because they're the ones who are going to be the, who are going to bear the burden of their success or their fa failure. That's their responsibility. So what we just tried to do is provide a, a you know, hand up for those who want to help out themselves and the community in a way that unifies the planet. Any more questions? Thank you all.